All right, so, so far for assignment eight, we are fitting text and type design around some artwork we previously designed. So I'm fitting it around my, my spot illustration, which is meant to resemble a card design and is reversible at 180 degrees. And I have my blocking sketch, which fix, fits the type in there and has this first and second dose. Uh, in the last videos, I created my black type. This was my black type, just finding an existing uh, typeface and actually merging two typefaces together, playing with the kerning, how bold they were, how, how they fit together, how they're staggered, in order to do that within the vector program, vector.com, I just put each letter on its own vector type layer and then modified them, modified their size, their placement, whether they had a black outline or not. I used 100% black for the fill and for the, the outline and figured out their spacing, right? Then I brought in my blocking sketch and then after already saving it as a vector, so if we look at assignment eight, we have a lot of files saved, a lot of SVGs, which is how you save it out of vector.com. Oh, it's gonna open up an illustrator. Yeah. So you'll remember all of these from the last videos. And the benefit of having it as a vector is it's scalable. It's always going to be clean, no matter how much you zoom in on it. So then once you have the SVG, I opened it up in vector.com and I placed each letter form into the sketch in a way that looked good. And as an SVG, they looked like this fit into the sketch. And I customized them a little bit more, right? But in order to bring them in in a usable way without so much blank space around them, I saved them as a PNG out of vector. And what a PNG does, of course, is it rasterizes them. It makes them out of pixels but I made them at a really, really high pixel rate. I think I did it uh, 6,000 by 6,000 pixels. So really high resolution black type. And now this is the type as a PNG that I can layer onto my finished spot illustration with PhotoBucket in order to finish off the poster and to color the, the type just like I would uh, color my logo variations. So I have all of that open. I'm going to keep it all up here. Maybe shrink this box a little bit. And in order to do the next step, which is fitting the type and coloring it on my finished illustration, not just my sketch, I'm going to open up PhotoP. Now, PhotoP is a raster program, just like Photoshop, which means it deals with pixels. And the important thing to remember is though you can bring vectors into PhotoP, you can bring SVGs and EPS files into PhotoP, it can't save out as an SVG or an EPS file. It can only save out as, as a raster file. But, as we've learned, if I drag in an SVG or an EPS or any file into Photoshop, drag and drop it into an open file, it will be what's called a smart object. And that smart object will reference the outside file while rendering it within the raster program. So we'll see the advantages of that. Okay, so in order to put it on my, my best, most finished illustration. It makes sense to go to my, ah, my Photoshop PSD. But instead of using Photoshop, 
I'm going to use photo P. But there it is. It's my working file. I mark it green because it's a PSD file, has all those layers. I'm going to open that into photo P. And this has everything, right? This has color holds. This has um, something I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about, which is CMYK separation. So I'll turn those off for now. It's got duotone. It's got just everything I could use to kind of finish it off as a spot illustration. And digital coloring is like a sandwich, right? So I have the white bread underneath. And then I, I like to see how it looks on the three different colors, black, gray, and white. And it looks decent. It reads. So now, because of the memory load, I'm going to turn off these backgrounds delete everything and merge my spot illustration all together. Okay, so anything that's locked I need to unlock and I'll say this is a assignment 8 file. There we go. So I don't think it will let me delete them. Oh, it will even if they're... Okay, good. Locked. I'll go ahead and keep the white background. That will be helpful for my poster. Or, you know, I'll add it in again later. And then everything that's showing here, I want from my flat color even to what I'm calling my CMYK separations. Which maybe for this purpose. Yeah, I'll hold this separate. I won't merge this. So I'm going to merge all the visible by going to the very top layer, going to layer, merge down. In Photoshop, we can just say merge visible and it would merge everything that's showing. But instead, what I'm going to do is just select them all, hold down Shift in Photo P, select everything except for the CMYK special effects thing I haven't taught you about yet. And I am going to say um, Layer, Merge Layers. And that should be everything I selected. Okay, so that goes into one, one clean layer. That saves a lot of memory. And now, on top of that, I can bring in my Assignment 8 type. Now I can bring in the SVGs, but because the artboard was so big and because photo P or I'm sorry, vector.com doesn't let you outline the text as text, you I would need to have the right typefaces within photo p in order to have it read and those are typefaces that are built in to <laughs> vector.com and you actually can load typefaces into photo p but you can't load them into vector.com and i don't have the typefaces that are built into vector.com so you can see the only one it can bring over these are the shapes that I drew in vector.com on top of the typefaces. And so that's why only the A is there and not even all of it. So instead of using the SVG, this is all confusing, but it helps you understand how digital imaging works between vectors and raster programs, which is a really valuable thing to learn. 
because it can be really frustrating. But once you understand it, you can problem solve and work within it. So with vector.com, my SVG can be also exported as a raster file. And I get to pick what the pixel dimensions are of that. So as long as I pick a really high pixel dimension, something that's bigger as a raster file than I need it to be, then it's going to work great in my poster. Because our poster is a raster poster. It's 9 by 12 inches by 300 pixels per inch. So I just need to make sure my text is at least that big in order to look good when it's printed. So dealing with resolution issues. It's unique to digital art, but it, it permeates kind of every aspect of digital art, even when you get into 3D modeling and, and animation, like being able to deal with resolution and memory so that things don't, so that things look as good as they can without wasting extra processing is very important. So just, just to remind you how, how that's done, because that might have gotten a little lost in the demonstrating making the black type. And this again is using only browser-based free software. So here we have it. Every one of them, you can see in my vector layers, this is vector.com, you can see that all of these are text text vectors, which means they are tied to a typeface, a, what they call a font here. So it's medulla. And I don't have that installed on my computer, so PhotoP is not able to read it. And I have not yet found a way, like bounded mode is not the same as outlined. I have not found a way to convert these to just regular paths. So the only shapes it could bring over were these shapes, which are the paths that I drew on top of the A, because that to modify and augment the typeface that I was using for the shape of the A, which had all these bumps around it. All right. So how can I make this a usable asset for my poster. So I can't keep it as a vector, which would be ideal. Instead, what I need to do is export it as not an SVG, but as a PNG. And this is actually something else that's helpful. Instead of exporting it as the full page, which will fill the artboard, I can export it as just the selection. Because that's the other problem, right? When you export the SVG, it's giving me all this empty space around it. Way too much. So if I just select everything that I'm using, so now everything is selected, and then I say export, and then I say export the selection, it will bind it and bound it just to that, that form. Just like if I were to save as an EPS out of Illustrator. But I can't save it as an EPS, I have to rasterize it. And because I have to rasterize it, even though it has no background as a PNG, I have to pick how many pixels it is. And I want way more than 649. You know, I want a lot. And there is no limit on how many I can make, right? But the more pixels, the more memory it takes. So I'm going to do, let's try 3000 pixels. So the width will be 3,000, the height will be uh, 1,900. So I might as well just make 1,900, 3,000, so that the lowest dimension is 3,000 pixels. And that should be big enough for all of your text for your, for your poster needs. OK, then I say download. It's going to go to my downloads folder on my Mac as an untitled. I don't like that it doesn't look like anything there. <laughs> it's the first time I've tried limiting it, the download to the selection. So let's 
just for expediency's sakes, let's just do the page. 